We just made these sassy Christmas ornaments using AI UV DTF and our X tool P2S and a couple of more acronyms. And we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it or make it? So do we. And we have new videos each week. It's Christmas season and you can't have a craft business if you're not selling Christmas ornaments right now. They are hot this time of year, actually any time of year. Mm -hmm. And then sassy ornaments sell. This week, we're gonna make sarcastic, sassy ornaments, super fast and super affordable using AI, UV DTF, and our X-Tool P2S laser cutter. Mm -hmm. Step one, we're gonna make our design. We're gonna start over in ChatGPT. That's gonna help us create our ideas. And then we're gonna take that information, put it into mid-journey, and that's gonna help us create our visuals. Here we are in ChatGPT. The most important part of our prompt here was we told it to act as a graphic designer and print out some trendy designs for stickers. We wanted them humorous, inappropriate, and sarcastic. So it gave us 10 different ideas here, and they were all pretty good. It gave us the design and the phrase that we wanted to use. So we let ChatGPT know that they were great, and we asked it to turn it into mid-journey prompts. So each of the 10 ideas are now turned into a prompt that we can use to create a visual in mid-journey. So we pasted each of those prompts into mid journey and we got several selections for each prompt. So here you can see, we started to ask for different versions of one of the designs that it chose. And you can really see that here with the gingerbread men, we got lots of versions. And then we decided we wanted a real cookie version, but with an angry face and it got a little uh, too angry. We went back to the elf, moved on to the Grinch, moved on to the drinks, got lots of versions of drinks. So we just kept tweaking the prompt and doing subtle variations on the ones that we liked. Back to the gingerbread men. There are a lot of these and a lot of, they're very entertaining. Once we chose the designs we were gonna use, we did bring them into Photoshop to tweak the text. As you can see, Mid Journey doesn't do a great job with creating the text. So we used the words that were actually already there and just kind of cleaned them up a little bit. We didn't have to go find a font. We just took pieces and parts of the words that it had created and got the text as it was supposed to be. And then we just exported them as PNGs. Step two, let's make our print and cut file. Now to create my cut and my print files, I'm gonna import the PNGs into Adobe Illustrator. And I need to make a print version and a cut version. So I need to outline each one of these PNGs. So to do that, I wanna keep all of the actual PNGs. So I'm gonna take this layer one and I'm gonna highlight it, come up here to my little hamburger and say duplicate layer one. Now I have a copy of layer one. So I'm gonna hide my original. Now if I hide my second copy, there's nothing there. So now I'm gonna select one of these PNGs. I'm gonna to go to Window, Image Trace. All right, so my Image Trace window pops up. I'm gonna select Silhouettes. Let it process, it gives me a pretty good silhouette, but I'm gonna do this for all of them. So I'm gonna pump up my threshold to make sure it's just black and white. If it's not white, then it's black. So I'm gonna go 252 for my threshold, enter. All right, now I have this whole outline. I'm gonna expand this. You can go to Quick Actions over here on the right, or you can go to Object, Expand. Now it's a real object, but it's grouped. It's got a bunch of these things in it, so we're gonna expand this group to see what's in it. Now I found this guy down here. He's the whole back piece. I'm gonna hit Release. Now with everything still grouped, I'm gonna grab this group. I'm gonna go up to my window, Pathfinder, and then I'm gonna unite everything, unite. Now I should have just a black outline, but he needs a little hook now. 
So, well, first I need to give them an offset also. I don't want to have to cut around the whole thing perfectly. So I'm going to come over here to stroke and we'll just say, give it a yellow stroke and we'll say three points, right? And maybe two, two points. We'll say object, path, outline stroke. Now it's outlined. We're going to go back to window, pathfinder, and now we're going to say minus front. So it shrank it just a little bit. Now we need to give him a little something to hang on to so he can hang from the tree like an actual ornament. So we're going to go over to our rectangle tool. And if you hold it down, you can go to your ellipse tool. I'm going to draw a circle. I'm going to start in one corner, start to draw, and then I'm going to hold shift. So it'll keep its aspect ratio. Now I want this to be about a half inch circle. And to make sure it's half inch, I can come over here and make sure it's a 0.5, enter. I'm going to go control C, this will copy it. Then I'm going to hold control shift and hit V. Now I pasted this circle right over top of the last circle. I'm going to make this one a quarter inch. So I'm just going to come over here to my transform. I'm going to say 0.25. Now there's a tiny circle right in the middle of this circle. I'm going to go back to my selection tool. I'm going to grab both of these and I'm going to say, I'm going to go to my window, pathfinder, minus front. Now I got a little circle. I'm going to need this little circle to do all of the rest. So I'm just going to grab him and go control C for copy, control V for paste, paste it down here. I'm just going to put it in the top of his head. This says it's center. And I'm going to nudge it up just a smidge. I'm going to grab this black outline and this little circle back to my Pathfinder tool. And I'm going to unite them. Now, if I bring back the original layer one, you can just see the edge of the cookie. I'm going to do this to the rest of them. And then once I have it all set, we'll come back to export. Now I have the two different layers. I have my cut layer with the little uh, thingamabob up top. And then I have my PNG layer. I have a lot of space down here, so I'm gonna make some earrings. I'm gonna take these two guys and make them small and make them earrings down here. So to do that, I'm gonna grab both layers. I'm gonna go copy, control C, paste. I'm gonna make these like, I guess two inches tall, two. So let's see, so that's like a, an inch and a half earring. All right, great, let me space these out a little bit. I'm gonna grab both layers again, copy, paste, Ooh, put it way up here. I'm gonna move these guys up in here. Copy, paste both of these guys, put them down here. All right, so this is 10 inches high, almost 11, and 15 long. All right, perfect. Now let's make sure we got our prints and stuff on the right um, layers. So I'm gonna grab all my little print objects here and drag them down to the print layer. So if I hide the black, this is all the stuff that's gonna get printed just like this. And if I hide the print and bring back the black, I'm gonna take all of this. I'm gonna get rid of the fill, so none for fill. And then stroke, I'm gonna stroke it red. Now I'm gonna export this one. Export as an SVG. Export. 
I'm going to keep all of this stuff default. I'm not going to check minify or responsive. I'm going to leave those unchecked. Export. I'm going to hide this layer and bring back my other layer with all the colors in it. I'm going to say file. Export as. I'm going to change this to PNG. I'm going to leave the file name the same. I'm going to export. I want 300 DPI. And I want a transparent background. Okay. Step three. Time to print. This process is super simple with the ProColored VF13 Pro. We're going to first make sure our print EXP software is on. This is what actually talks to the printer. And in our ProColored RIP software, we're going to import our image. We're going to turn it 90 degrees. And then we're going to click RIP. And it will create the TIFF file and add the additional white layer and varnish layers for us. UV DTF is versatile and can be applied to a wide range of products such as glass, metal, ceramics, and certain plastics. It's great for hard surfaces. UV prints are known for their exceptional durability. They are scratch resistant, fade resistant, and able to withstand daily wear and tear, which makes them perfect for indoor and outdoor applications. The difference between traditional DTF printing and UV printing is that traditional DTF printing primarily is used for fabrics and involves a heat transfer process. With UV printing, we're going to print directly to our transfer film, which creates an adhesive sticker when we're done. UV DTF printing is considered environmentally friendly due to the UV inks are typically low or no VOCs, making them safe for the environment and indoor use. And lastly, maintenance on this machine does require some regular cleaning and proper storage. You can't leave it sit for too many days without running prints and routine checks. It's pretty minimal with the white ink circulation on this machine and the head capping to keep the print heads wet. It's pretty self-sustaining. One caveat we have to mention is that we must stay close by while printing. We have found that film tension is super important. And through long prints, you might need to keep an eye on that film and ensure that it's taut during the printing process. Step four, time for the old stick and cut. We have our transfer ready. We're gonna take this transfer, peel off the backing, and put it on our acrylic. But first, we're gonna remove this protective film from the acrylic, and then lay it down. Squeeze it down really well, then we're gonna pull up the clear film that's over top of everything. And this is gonna allow us to cut all of the ornaments at one time, which is gonna give us perfect placement on the ornaments. Of course, I can cut the acrylic first and add the sticker, but then I'm aligning them by putting the whole sheet down and cutting them all at one time we're gonna get perfect placement. It's the lazy man's way. <laughs> oh, you didn't say go. Oh. One, two, three, go. Oh, mine ripped. Okay, well, I'm done. Mine's still ripping, hold on. Wapow! Wapow! All right, we're all stuck down. Now we're gonna take it over to the Xtool P2S. We're gonna line everything up using the close view camera and cut it out. Inside Xtool Creator Space, we're gonna start with a new project up here in the top left, this little plus sign. And when this loads, it should take a picture of my bed. It will refresh, and we should be able to see the acrylic with the UV DTF prints already on it. There it is, look at that. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my material. We're gonna use three millimeter clear transparent gloss acrylic. Confirm, it's gonna tell me that this material is flammable. Okay, I got it. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure. I'm gonna do an aim measure because I've got this acrylic slightly off the slats so that I won't get any flashback. So I'm just gonna select the middle of the material and we're gonna measure it. This is going to use some LiDAR to measure it so it won't move the material. It does it by lasers. Now here's my material thickness, or what it thinks it is now. Now I'm going to import my SVG, and I'm going to start to line them up with my close view camera. So let's import the SVG. Here it is all grouped. 
I mean, that was pretty close. This camera's fish-eyed, so I think I put it in there. I think I put the material in pretty good. We're going to ungroup these so that I can move them individually to line them up perfectly. I'm going to go up top right. I'm going to use close shot. I'm going to hover right over this guy. Now I'm going to zoom in and really line this thing up. Make sure I got it on all of his pieces. I mean, that's looking pretty good already. <laughs> that was lucky. All right, on to the next one. We'll do my close view shot again. Get this guy. I'm gonna zoom in. Man, I am so glad that I got really close when I laid that material in there. I don't have to go moving the um, angle around. I can hit my little space bar, which will give me a hand, and I can move my my, my, my canvas around. Close shot. We'll get this a green monster for Christmas. I'm going to line each one of these up, and then we're going to hit cut. We're going to check our speed and power just to make sure. I mean, it recommends 13 speed, 80% power. I'm going to go with it. Now we're just going to hit process and start. Oh, six minutes, not bad. And because we're cutting acrylic, we're gonna use our X-Tool Safety Pro IF2 inline fan. This will evacuate the chamber twice as fast, sending that stuff over to our filter. This has a smart controller, so I don't have to turn it on. It turns on automatically once the cutting starts. And it's fully waterproof and fully washable, so you can take this thing apart and wash it out when it starts to get gunked up. Step five, profit. We put a little hanger on these guys so you can actually hang them from your tree. They came out great. I think we're gonna sell them for about $7.50 a piece or two for 10, you get yourself a deal. Yeah. We were able to get eight ornaments and four sets of earrings out of this board, which cost us about $18. I think we could have gotten two more maybe three more ornaments on here. Mm -hmm. And I know we could have gotten more earrings on here. So we probably could have done, you know, probably about 10 ornaments, six sets of earrings. So we probably could have made $130 off of just this board. Yeah, that's, that's a great profit margin. And I so look forward to using this printer in more ways. So far, we've added it onto a tumbler, we've added it onto a round, now we're doing some ornaments. What else are we gonna come up with? I mean, the details and the vibrancy is top notch. I'm enjoying these. This was a super fast project. It looks super great. It was, mm. I'm impressed. We're, we're about out of time. I have to go print some more of these ornaments, especially this one. This is my favorite. <laughs> and a big thanks to all of our patrons. We love you guys, and that is the best way to support this channel. Join us over on Patreon, where you can get all this, all these files, extra content, all kinds of goodness. But it's really the community. It was each week. It's Christmas season, and you can't have a craft business. Business. Bidness. Bidness. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do a build? Oh, good, because I wasn't even. I